Hey, welcome back to Gecko Cove. My name is Bobby, and today I'm going to be going over part two of showing you guys my new enclosures that I have back here. You can see I have two of them, so we'll be talking about that in just a second. But uh, in the last video, if you haven't seen that, I'll link it up right here. But basically, I went over building it, showing you how easy it is to build this enclosure. I got it off Amazon. Link is in the description. I do uh, have an affiliate link for it. So if you'd like to support this channel and you uh, do want to actually use these enclosures, feel free to go and buy it with my affiliate link. Um, but let's talk about whether you should go buy it. I, so now I've had these enclosures since November, early November, um, and I liked it enough to buy a second one. I, so let's uh, jump into some footage here of me actually making the divider. Um, I'll show you what I made it of, how I actually secured it into the center, because I've seen some other dividers uh, made of foam and they just, for some reason, just didn't look uh, professional enough for me and didn't seem like they would uh, withstand the test of time. So I took a little bit of a different approach. It took a risk, did something new, got creative, and I think it turned out great. So let me show you that footage now and I'll check back with you in just a second. <laughs> So first off, I want to show you exactly what I used for the divider. I actually got this at my local Menards. Uh, it's something like a Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, I'm not sure where in the country Menards is located, but it's got better prices. So I went there and uh, picked this up. It's an Amerilux uh, 24 by 36 piece of PVC. It is closed cell PVC so that uh, the moisture that I'm going to be putting it uh, this through will not affect it in the slightest. Also, if you have any other PVC that you use for another project, maybe you made an enclosure or made a rack, uh, if you have any scrap pieces that are large enough, uh, this that should work as long as the plastic is thick enough and rigid. This is really nice rigid PVC and it worked beautifully for this project. Uh, I did need to cut it. I got two pieces out of this for 30 bucks, so for $15. Uh, I could customize these enclosures, not a bad deal whatsoever. And for your convenience, I will make sure to link this down in the description below. So just sitting here, uh, cutting the pieces that we need for the center, uh, but I'll flip the camera around in a second and show you after the two cuts that we've made, uh, what it turns into. The dimensions are gonna be 14 and a half by 16. And then I need to cut out a little uh, notch at the top corner and that's gonna be an inch by three quarters of an inch, and that should fit like a glove if my measurements are correct. So, wish me luck. So I've cut the divider. I have now measured the exact center, marked it with a marker. And what I'm gonna do is I taped it up top for stability. And now I'm going to silicone it in place. Wish me luck, let's give it a shot. So as you can see, plenty of silicone doesn't have to look pretty, just has to do the job and make sure water doesn't leak out. All right, so let's uh, do a little walkthrough of these now that they're completely set up. I realize I didn't have as much footage putting them together as I thought, but let's give you a little bit of a tour. So with these, you've got the little safety latch on both of them. I'll take them both off. And you can see as I slide the door, it stops, and there's no way that this can open while this enclosure is fully open. So with this one fully open, fully secure, I can push. You'll notice that I have up here some like pool noodle. This is actually uh, the insulation that goes over piping. Um, there is no way a gecko is going to get up and above. The issue that I had was the screening 
it was actually somewhat flexible. And I had a gecko that was just a little bit smaller. I really think some of my really big ones couldn't do it. Um, kind of just pushed up and over. But right now, they are going nowhere. So what I had to first do was silicone. As you can see, all the corners, especially down below, are all siliconed in. And then this, people ask how I actually got it to stay in place. You can see I used quite a bit of silicone. Okay, so I got silicone here. I have silicone all the way at the bottom. It runs up the back. And so uh, nothing up top since I have this. But with the three sides, I let it cure for a few days before I even considered putting an animal. You can see there's a little crack right here, right, where they can kind of smell each other, but they can't get to each other. No way, shape, or form. Um, so in here, I've got a substrate. How I do it is I mound it up into one corner. That way, if a, a girl is going to lay some eggs, I don't have to go digging through the whole thing. It does keep enough humidity. We do have the little uh, air vents on the side. They're just cutouts. Now, with that, this definitely dries out a little bit faster on top. So, with this one being on top, it actually makes this enclosure perfect because the vent up top really doesn't allow much to escape. So the vents on the side do a great job of letting air flow through, but not drying it out. Up here, I had a little bit of an issue. Uh, as you can see, and I recommend everybody keep hydrometers. I use these, I'll also link them down below, the Govi or however you wanna pronounce that. Uh, I have those in the enclosures to monitor the heat and humidity. They're great, they're Bluetooth. Uh, and Wi-Fi so I can monitor from wherever. But yeah, I actually took these enclosures and put them up top, not because I'm gonna use them up top, but for right now, it just prevents more escape of humidity. Uh, with this giant opening up here, you can definitely see how this would be great for an arid species that needs that kind of airflow. But for these guys, they do need airflow, but they don't need the humidity to escape quite that well. You'll also see up there, I've got an LED light. Uh, I'll link those in the description as well. What's nice is they're all on one unit and they fit perfectly right in between. I've got them sandwiched in here, down there. And then I've got those all on an Amazon outlet timer. And so I sync that up uh, so that they have a day and night cycle. Everything is automated as much as possible. The one thing I still want to do with these enclosures is drill a little hole in the back. And since they're all the same size, again, these are 18, 18, 18. Look at how much room, you know, it's funny. You actually can't see a gecko because they're all hiding. Plenty of hiding spots, right? I only have one gecko in here, one gecko in there, one gecko in here. And right now two geckos in here, male and a female breeding. Um, you can compare over here the uh, 18, 18, 24, right? Yeah, so it's got a few more inches, right? But you know how often I see the geckos up here? Very infrequently. You know when I see them here? A lot. So usually hiding in the cork bark and then jumping around at night. So, um, but I'm absolutely loving these. Uh, again, if anybody has any questions about the material here, uh, what it is, where I got it, or uh, how to just, again, it's simple silicone. You gotta go nuts. I didn't make it pretty, right? I wanted to make it secure. So this is like a giant rubber, you know, stopper right there. And again, it goes all four corners up and down because this, this enclosure here, when you put it together, it is not waterproof. It is not watertight. This is not, you know, something you're going to go and fill up. Um, but now that I've let this cure, I can spray this thing down and there's no issues with the water warping this, destroying this. It is a great product. Again, glass is really nice and smooth. And again, no way a gecko is going to get through here. I don't care how much they push. Um, and they're all similar enclosures. So really nice and uniform. 
I'll probably end up getting two more before it's all said and done and then hooking them up to my misting system, the Mist King. Um, and that's the one thing with the Mist King. I thought it would be great when I had all different size enclosures and it's a great system, but you can't control for this tank. I want this much mist and for that tank, I want that much mist. Maybe that's a different uh, misting system that you got to let me know about. But for right now, once they're all uniform, they're all 18, 18, 18, and I can set them to go for the exact same time, get the same amount of mist, and I know we'll be good to go. So I'm really excited for that, especially if I ever go on vacation. So that is my final review of, these guys are called the EcoFlex, I think New Age Pets. But again, the link will be down in the description for the enclosure, the thermostat, the lights, um, you know, heck, I'll throw in the uh, Amazon plug. Why not? But uh, if you do support this channel, uh, I, well, first off, if you're watching to this point, thank you so much. I really appreciate all of my, you know, followers, whatever you guys want to be called, fans, um, anybody who just gives me attention. I appreciate it whatsoever. Um, I'm just having fun documenting this, kind of seeing how the, the hobby grows. But if you would like to support me, and support this channel so I can keep doing this and making excuses to my wife that I'm not, you know, wasting too much money. Uh, please use the affiliate link and uh, go uh, buy some of this stuff because you will not regret it. You guys have a great day. Thanks so much. And you're watching Gecko Cove. Hey, if you've enjoyed this video and want to encourage me to make more Gargoyle Gecko content, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button, share this with a friend, and maybe uh, check out one of the videos right over there. I'll see you next time on Gecko Cove.